We now need to justify the conditions that we used in step 2, which was the reversible reaction in which SO2 uh, reacted with O2 and it produced uh, two molecules of SO3 and it was a reversible reaction, so the reverse reaction was also happening at the same time. And since uh, it was at equilibrium, that means that the rate of forward and the backward reaction would be equal. Now, the enthalpy change for the forward reaction in this case is negative, which means that, that the forward reaction is exothermic, it releases energy, whereas the backward reaction. So the forward reaction is uh, is exo. And the reverse reaction is endothermic. We now need to justify the conditions that we stated in, the, in step 2. We stated that the temperature used was 450 degrees centigrade. So that was the temperature that we were using in this reversible reaction to obtain the best yield of SO3. So why not a uh, higher? The question arises, why, do we, why don't we increase temperature? Why is it a higher temperature used? So the reason is, and we're going to bring in Lee Shatner principle in this case. So uh, if we increase temperature, if we increase temperature, uh, the principle states uh, that the equilibrium would try to equilibrium would try and decrease temperature t degrees centigrade so it's going to try and decrease temperature and the only way it can decrease temperature is that it would it would start favoring the endothermic reaction so the endothermic reaction endothermic which in our case the endothermic reaction is the backward reaction so so the endothermic or slash the backward reaction reaction would speed up would speed up and when when i say that it would be it would speed up or it would be favored that means that it would be faster compared to the forward reaction. So if the backward reaction, this backward reaction speeds up, that means uh, the reverse reaction is happening at a faster pace. So you'll get lesser SO3. So your yield of SO3 is going to decrease. So yield of SO3 decreases. Hence, it's not suitable to decrease temperature beyond a certain point then the yield of SO3 is going to decrease. If we increase temperature, the yield of SO3 is going to decrease. So it's not suitable to increase the temperature beyond a certain point. And in our case, the optimum point is 450 degrees centigrade. Vice versa, uh, what's the reason of not uh, decreasing temperature? Let's say if I, if I decrease temperature, then according to Le Chatelier principle, your if i decrease temperature the equilibrium is going to counter that that's the lee shatler principle so the equilibrium would try to equilibrium would try and increase temperature So it's going to try and increase temperature and we know that uh, uh, temperature is increased if the exothermic reaction speeds up which produces energy if more energy is produced the temperature would increase so the forward reaction is going to speed up it's going to be favored so so if i try to increase temperature exothermic reaction So exothermic reaction, which in our case is the forward reaction, uh, speeds up. 
and again i'm using the word speeds up in relative terms it it just means that it becomes faster compared to the to the backward reaction so the forward reaction speeds up uh, and equilibrium would shift to the right more so3 is going to be produced so the yield of so3 is going to increase so the end result is that the yield of so3 increases which is which is definitely a good thing so what's the problem why are we not decreasing temperature so the problem is that whenever you whenever you decrease temperature that if you decrease temperature your rate of reaction also decreases your rate of reaction also decreases as molecules become less energetic if they become less energetic that means that they uh, won't collide with each other that vigorously hence a slower reaction is going to be obtained so so the problem is going to be that uh, the end problem that's that's going to be encountered is that uh, uh, formation of so3 is going to take a longer time SO3 would take a longer time. So it's better to get a lesser yield but in a quicker time rather than a, a higher yield at and if it's taking up let's say let's say if I'm getting 100% SO3 but it's taking me 7 days then uh, it's not going to be very useful if i'm getting 80 percent so3 but it's taking me one hour that's going to be much more useful i can i can obtain 80 at least i can obtain 80 percent so3 in in one hour so uh, saving time is economical so it's better to save time rather than uh, go on improving the yield the second thing that we need to justify is the our use of pressure uh, the pressure used in this step were, were uh, we, the best pressure, the optimum pressure used was around 1 to 3 atmospheres. That's the pressure used in the, in the contact process for this reaction. Now, why, why don't we increase pressure? Why don't we have, uh, uh, why not a higher pressure? Let me correct this. What are the problems associated with using higher pressures? Now, the problem associated with using a higher pressure is uh, what, what are the advantages first? Uh, let's bring in the Lee Shatter principle. So, uh, so the principle states that if you use a higher pressure, if you increase pressure, then uh, your equilibrium will try to do the opposite it's going to counter that equilibrium tries to decrease pressure now the way it's going to decrease pressure is by favoring the lesser volume side so uh, it favors the lesser volume side lesser volume side we know that if the volume is lesser the pressure is going to be lesser pressure uh, uh, and if you increase volume if you increase quantity of the gas then the pressure is going to increase so the lesser volume side is your right hand side because if you look, look at both sides there are three molecules, three moles of gas on the left hand side, whereas on the right hand side there are only two moles of gas. There are two molecules, and over here there are two molecules plus one molecule of oxygen. That means that three there are three moles of uh, uh, gas on the left hand side. So this side would occupy a lesser volume. So the right hand side is going to be favored. Your right hand side. side would be would be favored and your forward reaction would speed up 
So forward reaction. Speeds up. Now there are a few. Uh, what are the disadvantages of uh, using higher pressure? The number one disadvantage is that your cost would increase. Cost increases and it's uh, it's not going to be it's not going to be economical. If forward reaction speeds up, your yield increases, which is a good thing, but cost increases as well. It's not economical. Uh, for higher pressures, you would need to build thicker pipes. Uh, if, uh, if, if there would there would be chances of explosions as well, so it's not very safe to use very high pressures. The other other thing is that, that we are not using higher pressure is that we already a very high yield. High yield is already being obtained. It's already being obtained. So it's pointless to uh, increase your cost without actually getting any significant benefit in yield. So a high yield is already being obtained. Uh, the contact process has a yield of 97 to 99%. So, so it's pointless to actually just increase your cost for no, uh, for just one, one or two percent. So, which is why a higher pressure is not used. Vice versa, we're now going to look into why a lower pressure is not used. Now we know that simply uh, one thing is, one thing about lower pressure is. that it's actually going to be difficult to actually go below one atmosphere pressure without actually in, in increasing your cost because one atmosphere pressure is is the pressure that you're living in right now you don't need to do anything if you want to decrease the pressure further you would actually actually have to create uh, some you have to uh, create some sort of a vacuum to go below one atmosphere pressure so it's pointless to actually even go below one atmosphere pressure the other thing is that if you if you uh, we can bring in the Lee Shatter principle as well. If you use a lower pressure, then equilibrium will try to equilibrium will try to counter that. So equilibrium would try to increase pressure. And it would favor the less, the more volume side, because the more if you have a higher volume of gas, there's going to be a higher pressure. So if you want to increase pressure, you favor the higher volume side. So higher volume side volume side would be. Would be favored now if the high volume side is favored and we can go back and look at the reaction the high volume side is your left hand side it's this side it has three moles so the higher volume side is the left hand side so high volume side is favored uh, the backward reaction which means that, that the backward reaction would speed up and since the backward reaction is speeding up uh, your yield is going to obviously decrease so your yield is decreasing so it's pointless to even go below one atmosphere pressure the first thing is that is that it's 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 going to be difficult to actually go below one atmosphere pressure it's going to incur you're going to incur a lot of cost the second thing is that uh, even if you go below one atmosphere pressure, it's pointless because your yield is going to decrease. The backward reaction would speed up. The last thing that needs to be justified is the use of, of the catalyst, which was vanadium 
bit oxide which is a transition metal uh, compound and uh, we all know that they they form they result in very good catalysts so why do we use a catalyst the first thing is that a catalyst is going to uh, it's going to speed up the reaction it speeds up the reaction and a catalyst speeds up uh, both reactions equally the forward as well as the as the backward reaction so it doesn't affect the equilibrium there's no effect on the equilibrium but it speeds up the speeds up both reactions there is no effect on the equilibrium position uh, and it speeds up both the reactions so it's it, it becomes faster to attain the equilibrium um, so and uh, the second thing is uh, it speeds up the reaction by reducing the activation energy reduces activation energy which means that a faster reaction occurs at a lower temperature occurs at a lower temperature so indirectly your energy cost is also reduced so if if it's going to take you four hours to attain equilibrium if you had a catalyst that same equilibrium would be attained uh, within half an hour so so overall your reaction is uh, faster and your energy costs are also reduced.